Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Versatile Paperless Teaching. Today we're going to talk about how to use applications like Evernote and CamScanner to go all digital and streamline your practice. So before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about why we would want to go paperless. So first of all, we want to make sure we can reduce clutter. So one of the problems that we have in teaching is there's just paper everywhere, there's books, there's all kinds of stuff on our desk in our uh, teaching life that can be a barrier to the information that we need access to, and we want to reduce that clutter. Another thing we might want to do is consolidate our stuff. And speaking of clutter, we might be carrying a lot of books around. In fact, this is an issue our students often have. And we can consolidate down to a few small uh, books or devices or pieces of contact where we can kind of get access to that information that we need. We want to stay in sync. So when we're at home or we're at work or we're in another classroom, we want to make sure we have access to our data. We want to share and duplicate materials. We want to easily be able to get information that we have into other people's hands. And we want to be able to get copies out there without actually having to sit and wait while we make copies. We want to be able to find what we need quickly. So if there's a piece of information that you want, you shouldn't have to spend a lot of time leafing through files or looking through books. You should be able to just get that thought out there and have the uh, item that you're looking for returned directly to you. And we want to be able to gather, organize, and analyze data. So we want to make sure that our data is all contained in a place where it's organized, we can get to what we want very quickly, it's all in the same place, and we can draw conclusions from it. So what will you actually learn over the course of this presentation? Well, we learn how to get started with Evernote, uh, and we'll specifically talk about how to install Evernote on native public schools machines. We'll talk about how you can work with your notes so how you can create, organize, and search through the notes that you've created to find exactly the information that you're looking for. And we'll talk about scanning with Cam Scanner. So we won't just talk about creating digital notes, we'll talk about converting physical notes into digital notes and storing them in Evernote. So we'll get started by installing Evernote. And you can do this using an application on your computer called Self Service. If you've ever installed any applications from Native Public Schools, you already know about Self Service. And you can go ahead and open it up and look under the Utilities category. That's where you'll find Evernote. And all you have to do is click Install. If you've ever used the Apple App Store, it works very much like that. So now that we have Evernote installed, let's take a look at the interface. On the left side, you're going to see your notebooks. And this is the easiest way to organize all of your data. So a notebook works like a physical notebook. It has a certain topic, and all the information about that topic goes into that notebook. The next column over is notes, and these are all the individual notes you're going to be working with. So these might be lesson plans, uh, pieces of websites that you've clipped and kept, they might be audio notes or pictures, they could really be anything. And then over on the right side you're going to have the current note, the one that we're looking at and editing. So this is where you would take notes, this is where you would write down ideas, this is where all that uh, active stuff is taking place. In the bar up at the top, you've got shortcuts, and these are the things you're going to get access to all the time from one click when you need them right away. So you can set that shortcut bar up yourself, and you can put whatever you use a lot in there. And then in the top right, there's a search bar where you can type what you're looking for and find it quickly. So in a little bit, we'll talk about how to do a really targeted search and get exactly the information that you're looking for. Now, why don't we get started by creating our first note? First thing we're going to do is click the New Note button up at the top. We're going to start typing in the area that is there for text. And that's pretty much it. All you have to do to create a note is click New Note and get started. Now, if we want to get a little more into the details of how we can organize and work with those notes, that's what we're going to talk about next. So let's get organized. Notes can be organized using both notebooks and tags. Now, as I said before, notebooks are the easiest way to classify what we're working on, and we can pile a whole bunch of notes together based on a certain topic. But with tags, we're going to be able to add context to those notes and make it easier to find them. Notebooks and tags are searchable. So no matter which notebook it's in or which tag it's got on it, if you know what's in that note, you'll be able to find it. And frequent searches can be saved and reused. So if there's a search you're doing all the time, or something specific that you're looking for on a daily or hourly basis, you can always get to it very quickly with saved searches. So here's an example. This is a lesson plan I was writing for my electronic music class. And let's take a look at how it's organized. So first of all, it's in the electronic music course notebook. 
And that notebook groups similar notes, all the notes that are related to that course. It also has tags on it for what it is, a lesson plan, what it's related to, electronic music, and the name of the unit, arrangement. So I can always search by those terms to find what I need. Down below we have a slightly different example, but this shows a search. So I can search based on which notebook a note is in, I can search based on which tags are on it, or I can just search based on the text that's in the notebook. I can also save those searches and reuse them. So if I have a frequent search that I do all the time, I can reuse it by keeping it under saved searches. So now that we've actually created a note, it's time to say goodbye to paper and hello to cam scanner. So with cam scanner, I can scan paper documents quickly and get them into Evernote with relatively little trouble. All I have to do is take a picture, show cam scanner where in the picture I want it to scan, assemble my document, and upload it to Evernote or any other service like Dropbox or Google Drive. So here's a closer look at what that process looks like. I'll start scanning by pressing the camera button, I'll focus my picture, and I'll frame it to make sure that I'm capturing the object that I want to capture. Then, Cam Scanner works its magic, and it scans in the paper, or in this case chocolate bar label, like a scanner would. I can then assemble my document and give it a name, and I can upload it to any service that Cam Scanner supports. And they include all the really practical, really useful ones like Google Docs, Box.net, Evernote, and Dropbox. So now that you can create notes both from paper and digitally, you might ask yourself, what can I actually use this for? Why do I really want to be doing this? Well, let's take a look. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, you can sort and organize your no notes with notebooks, tags, and saved searches. So there's a whole bunch of ways that you can keep track of that information and make sure it's available with the touch of a button. You can also record new types of data. So when previously we might only have been writing down text, now we can record all kinds of new stuff. We can stay in sync across computers and mobile devices. So when you move between work and home, or between classrooms, all of the data that you need will be available everywhere you go. And you can share documents quickly and easily. So if there's something in your Evernote that you want to get to somebody else, it's just one click away. So let's talk about organization and getting organized with notebooks. Here are a whole bunch of ideas for ways that you can get organized with notebooks. I have notebooks for lesson plans, sub plans, discipline, evaluation, licensure, parent emails. There are so many things you can keep separate with notebooks. and You can organize them in a way that you're going to be able to find them later. And with tags, we can add context. So I might put in things like course name, subject area, people that that note's related to. And those tags help you differentiate within a notebook so that you can tell what, it, what the information in that note is all about. Here's some ideas for saved searches. And the possibilities are really limitless here, but I'll give you some suggestions. The first one is for lesson plans in my game design course notebook. So if I just look in the game design course notebook, there's all kinds of things related to game design in there. But if I look for the tag lesson plan, then I'm going to find everything in that notebook that is a lesson plan. So if I'm only looking for lesson plans, this is what I would want to do. I might also look for parent emails about a certain student that I forwarded into Evernote. If there's an issue with a parent and I had to discuss the student with them and their emails came up, I could search for anything in my parent contact notebook that was tagged email and had the student's name in it. And here's a simpler one. I could also search for notes that were created today. This is good for taking a quick look back at what you've done today and whether there's anything that you've worked on recently that you might need access to. These are only a few of many, many different kinds of searches and operators that you can use in that search bar in Evernote. So the possibilities are really limitless. I talked earlier about new types of notes. Let's take a look at what those might be. So here's an idea for something you could do to give your kids uh, an idea of what they're working on in class in case they need a little brushing up in their notes. Here I've taken a picture of the whiteboard at the end of class so the kids could see what it was we talked about and supplement their notes. And I shared that to them very quickly and easily with Evernote. I could also record other types of data like audio. So if I were uh, on the go, or I had access to a phone or any other recording device, 
I could record an audio note that I could send to students later, or keep to myself just to remember what I was thinking of. I can send emails to Evernote. My Evernote account has a special email address just for me where I can send, forward, or blind copy email into that account. So whenever I have an email exchange with a parent, I send that email in a blind copy to Evernote, and it's automatically archived in my parent contact folder, my parent contact notebook, excuse me. I can clip web pages. So if I'm looking at a web page with an article my students need to read, or just something I need to remember for later, or maybe I'm doing research, I can use a special web clipper add-on for my browser to clip those web pages directly into Evernote. And Evernote saves my location based on where I was when I created a note. So if I need help remembering when, which note is which, I can use those location information bits to find the note that I'm looking for. Evernote also helps you stay in sync, and here's one of the really big strengths of it. With Evernote, I can stay in sync across pretty much any platform I'm likely to be using. I have a Mac and a Windows machine at home, and I use Macs and iOS devices at work. No problem. Evernote's got me covered because they're on every platform. If you use Android or Windows Phone, or if you have a tablet, Evernote can help you in all of those situations. Last, I wanted to talk about sharing notes with students. So often I'll take a picture of the board, or I'll have an article that I want to send out, and it's really trivial in Evernote to send that information out to students. So that could be things like whiteboard pictures, audio notes, web articles and clippings, scanned documents, or anything else. All I have to do is click that arrow, and I'm sharing to as many email addresses as I need. The possibilities are endless. So with Evernote, you can speed up your workflow, share new types of media, carry around less stuff. You can get access to what you need when you need it, you can stay in sync across multiple devices, and you can find anything right when you need it. So take a uh, look at Evernote, think about how you might use it, and I guarantee you'll find something really cool that no one else has thought of.